If tonight you stood in heaven's court to seek eternal favor, would you face Jesus Christ as judge, or would you face him as your savior? There are many who don't quite know for sure what that verdict would be, if ever. So let's imagine for a moment you're standing dead center in the courtroom of forever. Sitting before you is a structure, massive and intense. It's here your fate will be determined, before this judge's bench. Then a voice booms, this court's now in session, and your adrenaline starts to rush. Peering down with eyes that see through your soul is God the Father, your judge. Then off to your left across the room is the virtual silhouette of sin. Stepping out of the shadows of condemnation, your worst nightmare walks in. On his face is the smirk of evil incarnate, his mind fixed on your destruction in hell. You've just been introduced to your prosecuting attorney, none other than Satan himself. The Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren, so guess what he's going to do. He's going to accuse you of your sins, and he knows them all, both the old ones and the new. He's prepared his case for years. Now the golden moment is his. So in arrogance, he presents his case to the judge, and it comes out sounding something like this. worthless piece of trash over here. This one's a sinner to the core. This one's committed adultery, cursed his neighbor, stolen money, been into drugs, alcohol, and even more. This hopeless wretch has even slandered friends. And by that guilty face, this whole courtroom can tell that to a moral certainty and beyond any reasonable doubt, this one deserves eternal judgment in hell. Accusations still echo. Your every sin thrown up in your face. And God opens the book where every deed is recorded and reviews your records of disgrace. God says, the book says you did this, this, and this, and everything you were accused of today. Now before I sentence you to hell forever, are there any last words you have to say? Now if it's true you're standing there, courtroom of eternity, with God to your front and Satan, the prosecutor, to your left. There's one remaining eternal truth, one that's crucial to remember, one you should never, ever, ever forget, that on the other side of the courtroom, I said, on the other side of the courtroom, you ain't hearing me tonight. I said on the other side of the courtroom. It's the one and only Son of God, revealed in time and space. And he's your defense attorney who has never lost a case. It's not Buddha, Muhammad, or Krishna, or any others who succumb to death. Ladies and gentlemen, on the other side of the courtroom is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Then Jesus jumps up and says, wait a minute, Judge. Now I've got something to say. Now I remind you that on the cross 2,000 years ago, I washed his sins away. I was crucified. I died. They put me in a tomb. But long about the midnight hour, the power of God hit me and I walked out of that grave alive and well with resurrection power. The devil says, it's in the book, it's written in the book, check the book. God said, okay. Then he takes the book out, lays it open and says, now we'll see what this book has to say. He turns to the first page, the second page, the third. By the fourth, the devil seems shook. God closes, it says, the blood of Jesus must have worked, because there's absolutely nothing in this book. 
The devil says, now wait a minute, check that book again. All the sins are written down, they're all right there. God said, the devil, maybe you're mistaken altogether. Maybe it's this other book down here. The devil cries, no, not that book, not that one. God said, devil, why are you so uptight? God sets the book down, the dust flies, and on the cover it says, the Lamb's Book of Life.